This is not a thing where they hit us up and they're like, here's $10,000, just go say nice things you don't mean. We don't do that and we never will do that. Every video you'll ever see us endorse machines, we mean everything we say. There's tons of machines I hate. You won't see them on this series because I hate them. YouTube, I'm Dr. Mike from RP. Yeah. I wear the shirt to remind myself of who I am. Today, we are going to start our series of Dr. Mike talks about the machines in the gym he likes. The Atlantis horizontal leg press, so beautiful. Oh, is up first. Let's get into it. Couple amazing things about this machine. First of all, it's technically rigged as a hack squat. However, all you do is change the selectorize here and you can rig it in to be a leg press of multiple different settings. So you can do any height you want, which means this is a few more than just one machine in one. Super comfortable handles to grab. If you don't like grabbing handles up here, you can grab the handles down here just fine. They're super comfy too. Here's a really cool thing. This handle descends so you can squeeze out of the machine easier. Amazing range of motion. I use an extra platform because I'm not an adult height, but for you folks that grew up, these are unbelievable Atlantis custom pads that they put on all their machines. Your ankle would break off your body before you slip on this thing. Beautiful. Selectorized weight stack means no more taking plates off and on, especially as you get stronger or doing a lot of reps and a lot of sets and a lot of exercises. Putting weights on and taking weights off is so awful. It's just nothing you want to do. The selectorized here is beautifully engineered. There's a lot of selector stacks where you have to jam it in, push the stack down and pull the stack up to get it in. This floats in like it's not even there. Up here, we've got extra five pound weights. They add up to 10, which gives you even five pound in increments all the way from 20 pounds down to 410 pounds. For me, I can do 410 for a max gun to the head all out set of 20. And like I've hack squatted six plates for sets of 10. So this is a machine that's good for almost everyone. In case you're really lanky, the whole thing adjusts as far as range of motion. So you can start at a higher notch and go to a lower or higher notch at the bottom. I'm not typically doing that because I'm super short and I like a lot of range of motion. All around this machine is slick. It is effective as hell. It was built by people who understand lifting and who lift weights. And as a super amazing bonus point, two bonus points, it's engineered well, which is such a big deal. It works exactly as advertised. There's no weird snags. There's no weird, oh, I think they should have done this differently. And lastly, and this is a bit of an extra thing, it's so beautiful. Oh my God, matte black or jet black or whatever that's called. I'm not a colors person. Art was the only class I've ever failed in school. And uh, I tell you this, with my not so great vision for artistic ability, this is a beautiful machine. I love using it. Atlantis, you knocked this one out of the park. Come on. Two. It's supposed to hurt. Push, Bree. Ah. Yep. Three, two more. Let's Get go. Your Let's shit go. together. Up. Ah. Fuck yeah, one more, Bree. How do you best use this Atlantis horizontal leg press for hypertrophy and for strength? What I'll say is this, it's probably not the best machine to use for strength because it is very machine-like. It's on a specific track. It has a slightly lower frictional component, a bigger stability component. Free weights and plate-loaded machines are probably mildly superior to strength. For hypertrophy, for your quads, this machine has one of the best stimulus to fatigue ratios ever. Why? First of all, super full range of motion. Second of all, incredibly well-oiled, slick, and well-engineered components. The machine is like, it's like skating on ice and you actually know how to skate. And that one time you tried to skate, guy punched in the face, there was blood. The girl you liked, it, she laughed. In any case, it's an amazingly engineered piece of equipment. It's super smooth, which is awesome because it has very low friction, which is probably good for hypertrophy because you feel that eccentric pain all the way down. So here's how to use this. Higher repetition sets of 10 to 20 and even more sets of 20 to 25, brutal. You can lock out at the top and it feels like there's so little force throughput and instability. Locking out at the top, even if you're not a big fan of it, and you don't have to do it, it feels ultra safe. Milking 
that slow eccentric just feels amazing. As you squat down, it throws your quads forward automatically. And it's just quads, 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 quads. And you're essentially using your quads just to break on the way down. And then on the way up, it's actually a little bit easier, which is like so great. It's almost like an eccentric accentuated loaded machine in the way it functions in real life. Beautiful. Sets of 10 to 20 with mile reps. Why the mile reps? Getting into this machine is easy, but it's like you got to contort yourself and really set up. It's like getting into any machine. It takes a little bit of setup, like, you know, 20 or 30 seconds. Once you're in here, though, if you lock the machine out at the top, you feel with 400 pounds full stack, legit, folks, I'm not BSing you. You feel like there's half or less of the weight on your shoulders. I don't know what components are taking up the load and salesman shit. Quite frankly, I don't care, Bob. It feels super light on your shoulders, but heavy on your legs. I mean, geez, if that's not a minimization of axial load and a maximization of SFR, I don't know what is. It's awesome. So if you're doing my reps, you do a set of 10, you lock out at the top, you breathe three, five seconds. It doesn't feel like it's draining you. With locked out knees, you feel totally fine. You get a big rise in performance after you buy yourself multiple high quality reps. You do another little mini, mini mile rep set. You go again and again and again. You can do two, three, or four mile rep pauses in a set here and get 100% away with it. Another quick recommendation. The range of motion here is so big and the loading is so easy on your core and so hard on your legs. High reps here, you wanna be able to breathe as well as possible. So I would actually say, don't use a belt on here. I used to use a belt on this machine and then I stopped and I realized I was getting three or four extra reps because I could breathe better through those high rep sets. So no belt, weightlifting shoes, I highly recommend. Get in here, warm up. I would really recommend a one over a warm up. So for example, let's say you're using 300 pounds for working sets, go to 320 as your last warm up potentiation do two to four slow repetitions with it, real meticulous, good technique. Rest whatever three minutes, go back to 300. It's gonna feel like a breeze in the best possible way. Breeze for your lungs, breeze for your back, breeze for your shoulders, easy on the hips, terror of a thousand worlds on your quads. All I gotta say is don't throw up on the machine. <coughs> so you're gonna have a lot of sessions on here where you're like, holy crap, I don't feel so tired but my quads are pumped and I want to hurl. And what more can you ask of life? I love this machine. If I was to have to critique it, which is very difficult for me to do, I would say my only real criticism is I wish for us short Kings, they made an adjustable platform that moved back and forth so that you could make a really short ROM or a really long ROM if you needed to. That's honestly the only way I can criticize this machine because the motion, the angles, everything is perfect. One last little criticism, it's a linear force vector. So it feels like you have just as much weight at any point in the range of motion because of your changing leverages, right when you're about halfway up is when it feels the hardest. What I would love to see in a future model is a cam system that made the machine harder at the bottom and easier at the top that gives us that stretch under load if they had a selectorized plate and they made the machine harder at the bottom than at the top, this would be, in my view, about as close to an ideal machine as you can get in most realistic scenarios. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully next time we'll get into some more machines, which I can either promote or rag on. Which one, which one is going to be? We'll find out then.